Hello and welcome back to another video and in this one we'll be looking to repair a Tomy Charge G um, spelt C-H-A-R-G or Space G and this is a Sonic the Hedgehog version released in 1995 so these these Charge Gs are basically they look to be miniature um, remote control cars it looks like you put uh, you hold them up to the controller and it charges them up for a little bit and then you just send them around the kitchen and they spin around quickly and do wheelies and stuff which is interesting as it is because I, like, I like remote control cars but what caught my eye was this was mid 90s and it's Sonic the Hedgehog as well so um, my gut feeling is it's probably going to be the battery so I'll put the listing up uh, up here but basically it said bought as a gift for grandson but doesn't appear to work correctly maybe you can sort it the charger remote turns green and powers the sonic car but for us it doesn't power for long so selling as spares and repairs now i think they only actually are supposed to charge uh, only play for around two minutes so let's get in have a look at the box uh, and uh, on all the functioning and and see if it is just functioning normally and it's just two minutes uh, or if it's maybe something, uh, maybe it needs a battery um, replacement or anything else. So here we are. Now look at that packaging, that is just brilliant, isn't it? It just screams 90s, it screams Sonic. So first impressions, you know, really nice colours. Possibly a bit of a uh, sun fade here, it looks quite... Uh, uh, bleached out a bit of a small tear there we've got a crease line and it's obviously been squished at some point we've got uh tomy written there uh what's the on the other side exactly the same on the other side maybe that's not blanched out too much because you can see here it's about the same um doesn't seem to be too much inner packaging because that's all just moving around loose inside and on the rear sonic the hedgehog you can see you've got their char dash g sometimes it's there's a, a space when you search for it precision engineer remote control uh the revolutionary radio controlled charge up car is driven by the famous face of sonic the hedgehog designed in sonic's favorite colors turbocharged car with real attitude uh in fact that's exactly what it says on the number plate what's more your uh, sonic charge g recharges itself in just 45 seconds so give it a quick power boost from the handheld charge control you're ready to race spin and wheelie with your headlights blaring then build yourself a course challenge your friends with different different uh, frequency charge g's to truly supersonic race good look and drive carefully so uh, that's just talking about uh, charge uh, um, sonic charge g you cannot race against any other sonic charge g's or any red charge g because they're all on frequency a uh, have we got any information on the date? I'm pretty sure this is 1995. Uh, we've actually got here Sega, Sega uh, Enterprises 1991, 1992. So unless I find a, a, a later date, maybe on the car, we're looking probably 1992 for this one. Um, so let's take a look inside. And I'll sort all the box out, I'll clean it, I'll press it, I'll get it back to uh, a better condition than it is now. So let's have a look here. So starting with the car again, what a great looking thing this is. So it's about, it's quite um, bulbous, so sat on my hand, you can see it's quite chunky, but it, it's, it's small but chunky. Um, we've got Sonic driving the car. Uh, attitude as it says on the number plate i think this is kind of like a, a bump wheel so you can see i think i'd expect that to move yeah so when it's wheeling it wheelies along on the uh, on the on that on that rear bar tires reasonable condition there's a lot of gunk just inside you can see in there uh, we've got charge off and charge here and on um and then over here, so obviously you turn that off, you have batteries in here, you push the two together like so. And then that then, once the connection's made, you'll have rechargeable batteries in here and the charge moves across. So over here, uh, did we get any, uh, so this is 1990, the base, the box is saying 1992, that's the latest date, so we, we would go with 92. So in here we've got obviously turning around, which is where the wheels are going to move in opposite directions, as you can see here, so that would activate that, and we've got to go going forward as well. Tomy, 
Uh, don't use nickel cadmium batteries. Open by pushing down. So it looks like, right, so we need four, four double A's. Yeah, 147 is the lowest, so that'll all be fine. Although you would imagine they're going to get juiced quite hard when they're recharging the battery inside there. So put uh, all of these in. Condition looks pretty good inside. So green must be ready to charge. So we're expecting six volts to be coming out of here. Yeah, though, so you can see 4.5.76. So we know that's that's good. There's charge coming out. Let's see. In fact, so that that light's gone out now. Okay, so I think maybe you have to put it, attach it, then push a button because it says charge there and there. There's like a line, so it's almost like you have to put it on, push the button to say charge the car. So that's now going to charge for 45 seconds or so until the charge light goes out and then we're supposed to get um, around two minutes of run time. So this should now work. See it's trying. Yeah, it's certainly lacking the power, etc. So I think a, a new battery certainly isn't going to hurt inside here. Um, so this will be a two-parter. So, but what I think we can probably, it's, it's whether I want to strip it down now, leave it in, in parts and then get the battery and rebuild. I think, seeing as I'm here well, and uh, I might as well do that. And that way I can, I can make sure it is the correct battery than ordering blind. So we'll, um, we'll start stripping down uh, Sonic. There we are. Okay. So we can clean all that up as we go. So we've got a really corroded battery terminal. So that's as uh, dead there. And just make sure I've on camera, I've got everything. So orange and red to the brown. This is on the middle one, that one down blue here, black and gray. Black one vanishes underneath there, probably to the second set of batteries. And then this one here is all corroded, that red one at the rear. So that red one's feeding all the way down. Yeah, so you've got your, your charging contact there, comes up to here, the orange one, and then the white one is going to there. So there, that's our, into the circuit board. Then we've got, um, the red one then going out to feed that part of the battery and then the black one should be you'd expect feeding the uh, the other part of the battery which we can't see we can see it vanishing under there so it vanishes just underneath underneath the motor blue blue and brown are here on that uh, capacitor so we want to have a look underneath that motor which is inside this uh, this housing so we need to remove uh there's some screws here and here and there's also a screw there so we're going to want to take that apart you can just see how filthy it is all this build up i'm wondering if it's removing a tire so if we remove the tire we can get to these screws That looks like a gear housing, so I'm, before I take that one off, I'm, I think I'll take the tyre off the other side and see if I can get in that way, because I don't think I want to take this portion apart. It's probably full of gears. Just about get to these. Oh, so 
so that swings all the way round. And there we go, so then the motor housing. So then the motor then comes out of its section there where there are cogs, it sits in uh, straight into a hole on a cog on the far end and then there's a cog there. So hopefully all of those will sit in place and that cog up there isn't gonna start moving around now this isn't in there otherwise i'm gonna to have to open all that that up because uh, yeah, i'm hoping that will just slide once i'm done i'm hoping that will just slide back in there like that fingers crossed um so now what have we got a little plastic uh, protector and then finally so there's our black connection yeah, so the black connector is going onto there, and then we've got uh, the other one onto here. That's probably going to just fall off as well, isn't it? Yeah. Right, that's us all stripped down to the old battery. What we can do, just to prove how dead this battery is, I can use my bench power supply, and I'll put, um, let's say, six, six volts into it, so maybe half an amp seems about, about right. Negative here, positive here. So if I do these, it should now start charging them up. And then what do we get? It's probably gonna drop off really quickly. So we've got 3.25 amps there, 3.24, 3.5 half and half. So we're putting in six volts we're getting out three and they're both charging to about half so either they're designed to output three which i'd be be surprised because these these motors i'm pretty sure are kind of six or nine or nine or more so what i'm going to do is at this point uh, in fact no what i'm going to do is i'll be replacing that and in the meantime i think i'll just do a quick strip down of this control and clean out the contacts i can probably have a do the clean up there as well so let's have a look inside here. So here's our circuit board, two very simple buttons, the contact there and the uh, controls there that are just gonna sit on top. Just having a quick look around. I'm literally just going to clean up here and here. I'm going to just put some uh, contact cleaner on there and everything else seems fine. The, the soldering on here seems okay. It just feeds directly into the contacts at the rear here. They all seem fine. Um, so I don't, I don't really need to go messing about there. doesn't hurt just to give the, the springs a bit of a stretch out again if you imagine all the, the compression they've had for a while you just give them a bit of a stretch just put a bit bit of life back into them you can also just clean around the outside of the, uh, the controls where you're going to get a, like um, where all those mucky fingers will have been Okay, so just a bit more, bit more spring in the uh, in the buttons now, because by cleaning around the outside, there's nothing. I mean, they were clean anyway, but there's no um, gunk or anything stopping them springing up, and the extra bit of spring now just to come back into place. So pop that all back together. Yeah, I'm happy with that. All looking good. So let's have a look at what we're going to do next. It's always the way with these things. These, uh, these, any, anything with a, with cogs, they're a nightmare for cracks. Yeah, and this is this is another one here. So there's a, there's a cracked motor cog there. That's why it slid off so easily. Um, it's, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but if I do, it always looks like a faint black line. So I could see it straight away, uh, and it's there. There's a crack right in, right down the motor. I'll see if I've got a spare one of those. Uh, I wonder, now, now I'm wondering, do I need to go in there and check all the flipping cogs to make sure nothing else is broken or do, do I just take a punt and get the battery 
and that and then just hope it works we saw the wheels turning uh so the batteries are certainly an issue Let, i'm gonna go and i'm gonna check the batteries and then uh, i'll come back okay so welcome back i popped upstairs i started having a look at batteries and then i always hate to rush into things um without a proper diagnosis so i figured rather than go ahead with get the bat the battery i might as well make sure everything is uh, everything else is okay as, as well so i know that for instance this is broken so i've just dug out my bag of cogs the closest i could find so it's a it's a nine tooth cog was this nine tooth it's not quite as long as you can see it's that long I'm hoping if i put that in the middle that should still engage with the gears in there so my plan now is to uh, replace this um, uh, red cable re see uh, put that cog on there clean out everything lubricate the motor put it all together and then see how well it operates I didn't want to bore you with the uh, the back of my head. Basically, I've cleaned out <clears throat> all the interior. There's loads of this kind of stuff all wrapped around the wheels. It was all minging, so I've got rid of that. One thing I noticed was so this is, this attaches on, and there's a, there's a piece of plastic like a shielding, and I think a, a small amount of that is is broken on uh, one side, one of these sides. It basically just causes a small amount of wheel wobble like that as opposed to the other one where that where that uh, that piece is missing. I've cleaned out all the inside, I've re-soldered uh, down at the bottom. Uh, so basically I took them off, cleaned out the, cor the corrosion and reattached those. The batteries are back on. So let's rebuild this and pop on a, uh, a cog as we're, uh, as we're working as well. So I welcome you back. Um, I've just adjusted the cog slightly so it's now in and <clears throat> as you can see if it's now going to be secured this is attached to I've dialed down to three volts you can see that the the wheels actually turn quite well so you can see they're both both running forwards and then in the uh, the turn motion so that that's all looking really good the lights are working as well but what i am finding is as soon as i remove power it just doesn't seem to have the power it just doesn't seem to have the output so it's it's got to be it's got to be the batteries we know the cog's going to work it might need a tiny little fettle so i do need to get two more of these batteries so that they can output three volts so i'll go and order those and then there's going to be a part two right hello and welcome back so i think when i last stopped the video i was off to order some batteries now what i found was so these are they, they're known as uh, the AAA quarter size batteries so like one slash four quarter size and there aren't many places that do quarter size batteries in fact using a, an internet search there was only one place where i could find like for like replacements and that was in america so it was going to be really tricky to order those and send them over so what I decided to do instead was um, order some um, one third size batteries. So they, instead of looking like this size, they're like this. So they're a tiny bit longer, especially if you get the ones with the tip instead of flat top. So I've gone for these ones instead. They're the same voltage. So they're 1.2 volts. They're just a, a little slimmer and, a, and ever so slightly longer. And these ones originally were 80 milliamp hours. And what I've done is I've gone for these ones, which are 100 milliamp hours. There were some other ones which were 120, so even more, um, which obviously means it's gonna last longer when, when, when it's charged, but I think they were from China. So anyway, I've gone for ones that are uprated, 100 milliamp hours. It's a 1.2 volt. And as you can see there, it's a one third AAA battery. Um, 
and they're kind of most of them are listed as, as solar batteries now what i've done is i've put the originals back in because the motor has to sit on top of them it, it sits as, it, they they act as the base to hold that in position so i've put those back in and then my intention is going to be to then uh, attach these two to uh, together and then they're then going to sit um, above in this in this space here so they're just going to sit in addition to it and then i'll wire them in there and that's because i've got enough room i think in this section here um of the housing that they can go in there and then I, what i'll do is i'll then attach the leads to these batteries instead so it's, that seemed like a really sensible solution um so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to get uh going to look at my parts bin find a, a connection uh, kind of a, a battery connection to uh, connect these together and um, and then I'll come back. So I've looked through my parts and this is kind of, um, you know just a kind of generic uh, battery terminal uh, setup and I think this will work quite well because it's got a nice a nice size indent there so my plan will be to attach this like that you can see how it sits in quite well and then the base of that one will sit like that so it's nice and flush so i'm going to remove this part i'm going to remove the spring get my tin snips um, on here and just trim trim that end down and then i'll fire up the soldering iron and i'm going to attach uh, these to the base and uh, yeah and you'll see that now the, the thing to just bear in mind is um when you're soldering onto a battery just be careful you're putting heat into a battery um so really i'm just gonna Put the majority on there and just be quite quick with it um, and, and just using an element of care and then when it's all done um, I will then um, attach attach them on there and I think what I'm going to do now as well is I'm going to um, put some tape around these to stop them flying all, all over the place so we'll probably just go into a bit of a, a sped up uh, uh, part of the film now. Uh, so we're getting 2.5 so now we'll attach these leads so there we go so we can see it working working well so the current voltage is 2.46 2.47 Fingers crossed we get more than 2.46, 2.47. Okay, now let's see what we've got. Come on. 2.7. Right, so it's charging. That's really good. Now what I want to do is I'm, I'm probably gonna, I'll probably have to do a jump cut here. Is I'm going to put some uh, tape around the bottom so that it doesn't short on the motor. I'm also going to use glue, a glue gun to cover the contacts to keep those in place, and then attach it to the back rather than using tape so it's nice and uh, nice and secure. Okay, so what I've done is um, I've now decided to basically mount it on the slope of the roof, so on this part here, just on on the inside. Uh, just using that strong double-sided tape. I have put a, a blob of uh, glue on each side, but it wasn't really needed. And actually, when that now goes on, you'll see that it, it fits on really nicely. It just sits on top of the board. There's enough clearance. So that's worked out really well. So I'll put the aerial back through there. And then you'll see it just lightly sits on. It closes really well. Everything's all lined up. So yeah, that's going to that's gonna work. It shouldn't shouldn't go anywhere so we'll get that all re tightened up all rebuilt new batteries up in there reattached everything so i'll stick some batteries in here take it through to the kitchen run it till it dies try and charge it up and then um yeah fingers crossed everything works and then i'll come back in and do a review and i'll get the box out and i'll tidy everything up Welcome to the racetrack. We've got our car, we've got our control. I've put some fresh batteries in the controller and uh, yeah, we're just going to see if all the hard work paid off. So 
so you can certainly see it's working but i am i am having to get pretty 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 close to it um almost like practically almost touching the aerial uh, so, but it's so small that you could kind of play with it on a desk in front of you or something and what you're also seeing is it's i'm getting a lot of um play out of it as well in terms of minutes um, everything's lighting up the, uh, the lights and stuff. So let's let's see how long this this does last for. If I bring it over, and then do a charge. Finally, finally losing a bit, uh, just finally losing a bit of power now. It's just coming to an end, and that was around seven minutes, so real good amount of run time. So let's see if the uh, the charge function works. So put it into the charge mode, uh, put the contacts on. Forty five seconds, and fingers crossed, we'll be back to uh, to full power. Okay, fingers crossed. Hopefully it'll be back to how it was a minute ago. And it is, look at that. Absolutely flying around. So I think that's a, a resounding success. We'll leave it there. I'll go back into the uh, into the workshop and we'll do a wrap up video with, the, with this and, and the box. I'll see you in there. And so here we are at the end of our Sonic the Hedgehog Charge G journey. Um, way back, I think right at the very beginning, we had a look over the box. Since then, I've cleaned the box and pressed it so it's in a much better state. It doesn't have that kind of squished side. Now it's all nice and square all the way around. I've also uh, reattached a couple of areas where it was coming away and just peeling in the corners and stuff. So you've got a little bit of sellotape on the sides, a couple of uh, tear marks, but other than that, not too bad at all and and you know what having a look at this again what a great box the colors the sonic the hedgehog logo everything on there the uh, the ring uh, thing at the back really nice box uh, i then went in and if you remember i took this apart just at the back didn't do anything too silly i just uh, um, got put the, a bit of expansion back in the springs cleaned it all out checked it so that was all working and then we went on to this fantastic little car so the condition is great lovely chunky small but chunky size one a couple of things that i noticed was i think there's maybe a sticker or two missing somewhere for instance there's an indicator missing there because this was a sticker pack you put on but you know there's practically all the important ones i think are there so good condition i stripped it all down i identified that there was a broken uh, motor cog so i replaced the cog and then i identified that the batteries were pretty much dead uh, because it was hard to source the, the, the a like for like battery i put the batteries back inside because that's where the motor sat um, whilst i was doing all of this i cleaned everything out on the inside and i also replaced a couple of the um the cables because they were all corroding inside I put fresh cables in and then i got two new batteries of a higher capacity so i got two 1.2 uh one thirds aaa batteries that were 100 uh, milliamp hours pop those in attached them to the top mounted them there in this in this uh, space and then i went and tested it and rather than the original kind of two hours of play time we got near enough seven minutes of play out of that the only thing i found was you literally had to hold the thing about this far so it's it was it is remote but you're pretty close and obviously you can't change the uh, the size of aerials because they're all linked to the uh, the frequency so you know what it is what it is and because it's so small it's the kind of thing that you could just chase around the kitchen or or play on the sides and i haven't ever had one of these to compare it to so i'm not i'm not really sure what the range is supposed to be and there was nothing on the box but we saw it working and then charged it up again i love that feature so basically you put the uh, you know put it on there push the button once it's attached it charges it's probably just on a 45 second timer rather than any feedback charged up and then away it went again back up full power which was superb uh, only other thing to point out because when i 
was reattaching a couple of the cables. Uh, a bit of the plastic just distorted at the bottom where those pins are, so one's like at a slight angle, but it doesn't really matter because these don't have to go inside, they just have to touch and they still touch absolutely fine. So nothing to worry about there either. So yeah, chasing it around the, uh, the kitchen, it was uh, one of those ones where it spins one way, so it spins to the left. So it, you spin on the spot or shoot off. Uh, when it when it goes off from uh, standstick, it does kind of a bit of a wheelie onto its wheelie bar and then settles down and you just chase it around and all that kind of stuff. Just a really fun toy from the 90s. So we, we established it was 1992, a Sonic the Hedgehog version, which I think because we found that little thing inside was modeled on, the, on a Lamborghini Diablo, but a fantastic box, a really fun little item. I think the Sonic the Sonic the Hedgehog one's quite rare, all kind of fixed working better than the original in terms of its runtime. Don't know about the range, but uh, a really good, fun restoration. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please like, share, comment, subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. It's still quite small, so that would really be appreciated if you wouldn't mind doing that. Uh, a few more visit videos in the pipeline, and until the next one, all the best, take care, and see ya.